Welcome to Nuzilla's English World. Dear students, I welcome you all to the lesson Shine as my shield, which is an extract from the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi. The story of my experiments with truth. Shyness by Shield is an essay. It's an extract from the autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with the Truth by Mahatma Gandhi. The presentation will be like this. We will see introduction about the author, introduction about the lesson, explanation of key points of the essay and meanings of some difficult words, some simple questions to test the understanding and recapitulation, some summary notes and other links for further reading. About the author, the writer, this essay was written by Mahatma Gandhi whose full name was Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He was fondly called by other names like Mahatma Gandhi, Bapuji, Gandhiji, M.K. Gandhi. He was born on 2nd October 1869. He was born in Porbandar, Kathiawar Agency, Bombay Presidency which is presently in the Gujarat state. And his parents were Karamchand Gandhi and Putli Bai Gandhi. His wife's name was Kasturba Gandhi. He died on 30th January 1948 at the age of 78 years in New Delhi. And he was assassinated by Nathuram Gadse. The monuments that were built in his name were in the uh, Rajkant Gandhi Spurti. He studied his law course in the University College London, in the Temple, London. His initial occupation was as a lawyer, and later he turned a politician, an activist, and he was a writer. Mahatma Gandhi was very well known for independence movement of India, non-violent resistance, non-cooperation movement. His notable works include the story of my experiments with the truth, which was his autobiography. And he, he worked as the president of the Indian National Congress during 1924. 25. This particular essay is an autobiographical essay extracted from Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with the Truth. This essay tells how Gandhi used to feel to deliver a public speech when he was in England as a law student. The essay tells about various attempts of Gandhiji to overcome the fear for public speech. The essay ends with Gandhiji's opinion that his silence or shyness to speak actually acted as a shield and helped in molding his personality. This essay was extracted from Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography the story of my experiments with the truth. This essay tells about the initial fear of Gandhiji to deliver a public speech when he was a student in England. It gives different anecdotes, that means incidents, of Gandhiji's repeated attempts and failures to deliver a public speech while he was in England. 
Finally, the essay says that Gandhiji's shyness became his shield. Gandhiji's initial trouble with public speaking. When Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was studying law in England, he became a member of the Vegetarian Society. Vegetarian Society was an organization that was running in England at the time where all the members who follow the vegetarian diet in their day-to-day -day life were the members of the society. He was elected to the executive committee of the vegetarian society, but never opened his mouth. He sat quite silently while other members were expressing their opinions at these meetings. Though he was interested to speak, he could not open his mouth. He used to think that others knew better than him. Whenever he dared to speak, a new subject would be started. This went on like this for a long time. That means initially Mahatma Gandhi struggled a lot even to open his mouth to express his opinions or ideas about certain things. Gandhi's first attempt in public speaking. In the meantime, the Vegetarian Society faced a serious situation because of the differences between two persons or two members, Mr. Hills and Dr. Allison. Mr. Hills was the president of the Vegetarian Society. He was a Puritan. That means he belongs to a particular section in Christianity. He was the proprietor of the Thames Iron Works. He gave much financial assistance to the society. Many members of the society were his followers or supporters. Dr. Allison was another important member. He was advocating the new birth control movement. At the time in England, there was a movement in support of artificial birth control. That means artificial measures to control the birth or pregnancy. So Dr. Allison was preaching the birth control methods among the working classes. Mr. Hills, who was the president of the society, regarded the activity of Dr. Allison as against the morals preached by Christianity. In those days, Puritans were against the artificial methods of birth control. So, Mr. Hills wanted to send Dr. Allison out of the group. That means he wanted to send Dr. Allison out of the vegetarian society. Mahatma Gandhi also did not like the artificial birth control movement at that time. But he did not want to support Mr. Hills' decision. That means to send Dr. Ellison out of the society because the Vegetarian Society can have one as members, anyone as members, if he is practicing vegetarianism. That society's name itself is Vegetarian Society. If you practice vegetarianism, you can become a member. So one need not worry about his religious beliefs or practices. That's what Gandhiji believed. So Gandhiji did not like the idea of Mr. Hills to send Dr. Ellison out of the society. Mr. Hills brought a motion, that means a proposal, to remove Dr. Ellison. Gandhiji wanted to oppose the proposal of Mr. Hills, but he did not have the courage to speak. The Miss Gandhiji wanted to oppose Mr. Hills, but he could not bear to speak because he was having the fear 
to give a public speech. So he wrote down his thoughts on a piece of paper, but he could not even read it. So someone else read his thoughts. In the voting, Dr. Allison lost. That means Dr. Allison was sent out of the society. So he was removed, removed from the society. Thus, in the very first battle of the kind, Gandhiji found himself siding with the losing party. That means Gandhiji wanted to support Dr. Allison and oppose Mr. Hills in the proposal to send Dr. Allison out. But unfortunately, Gandhiji was on the side of the losing party because everyone or majority members supported Mr. Hill's decision and hence Dr. Allison was removed as a member of the society. Thus, in the very first battle of the kind, Gandhiji found himself signed, siding with the losing party. Gandhiji was satisfied that his thought was right. Later, Gandhiji resigned from the committee. Gandhiji's shyness to give a public speech remained throughout his stay in England. Even during his social meetings also, he could not speak to the gathering. Gandhiji's second attempt to deliver a public speech in England. In one more incident, Gandhiji went to Ventnor, a place with Sergeant Mazumdar. There, Gandhiji was invited to speak at a meeting for the promotion of vegetarianism. Once again, Gandhiji prepared his speech in writing to speak extempore, that means without any preparation, was out of the question for Gandhiji. That means Gandhiji could never speak, at least when he was in England, without preparation. So he wrote his speech. He stood up to read the written speech, but he could not open his mouth again. His vision became blurred and he trembled. That means uh, he shivered to open his mouth and to talk something. So Sergeant Mazumdar had to read it for him. Gandhiji was ashamed of himself and sad at heart for his incapacity. Even generally, we also feel shy to speak in public and we feel sad also for not being able to open our mouth. So that was the situation of Gandhiji also at that time. Gandhiji's final attempt to deliver a public speech in England. Gandhiji's last effort to make a public speech in England was on the eve of his departure for home, India. That means he completed his course, so he was coming back to India. At that time, he made his final attempt to give a public speech. Then Gandhiji invited his vegetarian friends to dinner in the Halborn restaurant. During the dinner also, the people gave speeches. All other people gave wonderful public speeches during the dinner. When Gandhiji's turn for speaking came, he stood up to make a speech. He wanted to start his speech with a humorous anecdote. That means a humorous story. That means a joke. But again, he could not proceed beyond the first sentence. He stuck there. That means he stopped there. He could not go beyond the joke. His memory entirely failed him. And in attempting a humorous speech, he made himself ridiculous. That means he wanted to start his speech with a joke, but he cracked the joke. Uh, and he could not go forward, so he made a fool of himself. So he abruptly sat down by thanking the guests. So he thanked the guests for coming and he sat there immediately. It was only in South Africa that Gandhiji 
got over his shyness, though he never completely overcame it. It was impossible for Gandhiji to speak in Pramchu, that means again, without preparation. Gandhiji hesitated whenever he had to face strange audiences and avoided making a speech whenever he could. Gandhiji admitted that he was not good at engaging friends in a meeting. Gandhiji's shyness became his advantage. How Gandhiji's shyness became his advantage? Generally, shyness to speak in public is considered a defect or a weakness in an individual. But interestingly, Gandhiji says that his weakness of not being able to speak in public actually became his strength or became his shield or became his protection. How? Let's see. Gandhiji said that though occasionally his shyness put him in awkward situations, his constitutional shyness did not become a disadvantage. So his shyness actually became an advantage. In fact, on the contrary, it was all to the advantage of Gandhiji. His hesitancy in speech became a pleasure in his later life. Its greatest benefit had been that it had taught Gandhiji the economy of words. That means he started learning using lesser number of words to express his thoughts clearly. Gandhiji had naturally formed the habit of controlling his thoughts. A thoughtless word hardly ever escaped his tongue or pen. That means all the words he expressed all through his speeches and writings were clear. He found no occasion where he had to regret anything in his speech or writing. If you speak something wrong, then you need to regret. But Gandhiji never spoke any wrong word. He spoke very little. And whatever he spoke was truth. Thus Gandhiji had been spared from many troubles and a waste of time. Experience had taught Gandhiji that silence was part of the spiritual discipline of a supporter of truth. That means if you want to practice truth, you need to practice meditation. Generally, people have the weakness of exaggerating, suppressing, or modifying the truth. Generally, people, either they make more of the existing thing, they exaggerate, or they may suppress, they keep it confidential, they keep it as a secret, or modify the truth, they change the truth also, willingly or unwillingly. Generally, people have the weakness of exaggerating, suppressing, or modifying the truth willingly or unwillingly. Silence is necessary in order to surmount it. That means if you want to conquer your weakness of speaking lies or changing the truth, then you need to observe silence. A man of a few words will rarely be thoughtless in his speech. He will measure every word. Generally, we see some people speak very less, whatever, but whatever they speak will be valuable and useful and purposeful to the listeners. Most of the people are interested in speaking a lot and they generally exceed the time limit. We see many speakers who come for meetings, they exceed their time limits. But such talking is useless to the society. That's what Gandhiji opines. Gandhiji finally said that unnecessary talk is so much waste of time. He said that his shyness had been in reality his shield and buckler. It had 
allowed him to grow. It had helped him in his judgment of truth. Thus Gandhi finally felt that his shyness was shield, that means protection, and it molded his personality. You may find in your tests or examinations based on uh, your school or college or university's level. Just think about these questions. Who is the author of the essay, Shyness Machine? Where is the essay extracted from? Where did Gandhiji go to study law? In which society did Gandhiji become a member? When was the first time Gandhiji tried, tried to deliver a public speech? When was the second time Gandhiji tried to deliver a public speech? When was the last time Gandhiji tried to deliver a public speech? When did Gandhiji improve in his public speaking skills to some extent? Did Gandhiji think that his shyness was a disadvantage? Did Gandhiji ever regret for what he spoke? Like this several questions may appear. So let's try to recapitulate what we have learned. This essay was extracted from Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with the Truth. It gives different anecdotes or incidents of Gandhi's repeated attempts and failures to deliver a public speech while he was in England. When Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was studying law in England, he became a member of the Vegetarian Society. When there were differences between Mr. Hills, the chairman of the society, and Dr. Allison, the supporter of family planning methods, Gandhiji tried to speak for the first time in the public, but he failed to deliver a speech. In a meeting held at Ventnor, Gandhiji tried to read a written speech, but he failed in this second attempt also. Gandhiji's last effort to make a public speech in England was on the eve of his departure for home, India. When he gave a dinner to his friends in the Holborn restaurant, he tried to deliver a public speech. He started with a humorous anecdote, a joke, but he failed to make an impression. So he suddenly sat thanking the guests. Gandhiji could not learn the art of public speaking while he was in England. When Gandhiji went to South Africa only, he could learn delivering public speeches. He still had the fear in him. Gandhiji finally tells that his shyness to speak in the public did not become a disadvantage. In fact, his silence became an advantage. It taught Gandhiji the economy of words. Gandhiji had naturally formed the habit of controlling his thoughts. Never did Gandhiji utter a thoughtless word in his life. Experience had taught Gandhiji that silence was part of the spiritual discipline of a supporter of truth. Gandhiji finally said that unnecessary talk is so much waste of time. He said that his shyness had been, in reality, his shield and buckler. Buckler means that something that controls you. It had allowed him to grow. It had helped him in his judgment of truth. Thus, Gandhiji finally felt that his shyness was a shield and it molded his personality. Let's now look at the overall summary of the lesson. Shyness, my shield is an essay written by Mahatma Gandhi. This essay was extracted from Gandhiji's autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with the Truth. It gives different anecdotes of Gandhiji's repeated attempts and failures to deliver a public speech while he was in England. When Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was studying law in England, 
he used to fear to deliver a public speech. He became a member of the Vegetarian Society. When there were differences between Mr. Hills, the chairman of the society, and Dr. Allison, the supporter of family planning methods, Gandhiji tried to speak for the first time in the public, but he failed to deliver a speech. Someone else had to read his speech. In a meeting held at Vendna, Gandhiji tried to read a written speech, but he failed in this second attempt also. His vision blurred and he could not go forward. Gandhiji's last effort to make a public speech in England was on the occasion of his departure for home, India. When he gave a dinner to his friends in the Holborn restaurant, he tried to deliver a public speech. He started with a humorous anecdote, but he failed to make an impression. So he suddenly sat thanking the guests. Thus, Gandhiji could not learn the art of public speaking while he was in England. When Gandhiji went to South Africa only, he could learn delivering public speeches. He still had the fear in him. However, Gandhiji felt that his silence did not become a disadvantage. It actually helped him to develop his personality by sticking to truth. His shyness taught him the economy of words. He learned controlling his thoughts. Gandhiji never uttered a thoughtless word in his life. He also felt that silence was part of the spiritual discipline of a supporter of truth. Gandhiji finally said that unnecessary talk was so much waste of time. He said that his shyness had been his shield, his protection. It had helped him uh, in his judgment of truth. I have provided you some more references for your further study or exploration. You can read the full essay and autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi in this link mkgandhi.org wherein the chapter 18 is our present essay. For summary of this particular essay again, you can visit my blog englishnotesummary.blogspot.com and you can watch my YouTube videos also uh, for further lessons and updates. I have provided you here the meanings of some difficult words, both in English and uh, as well as in uh, Telugu, I mean uh, my native language. You can go through the meanings of all these difficult words. For example, shyness means bashfulness or nervousness. Shield is something that guards. Shield means a guard, a protection. Tongue tied means be silent, not opening mouth. Tempted means to get attracted. Better informed means having better knowledge of something. Muster up courage means to get courage, to have courage. Cowardice means weakness or fearfulness. Puritan, a section of Christians, Protestants in England. Birth control movement, a movement in support of family planning in European countries. Cutting at the root of morals means going against morals. Dietetic means nutritional related to food. Anti-Puritan views means opinions opposite to Puritans. Motion here in this lesson means proposal. Artificial methods of birth control means 
artificial methods to control birth or family planning methods. Improper in the essay means not decent or rude or impolite or disrespectful. Exclude means to keep out, to send someone out, to remove. Refuse means not to agree, do not agree. Promotion of vegetarianism means to support the movement of vegetarianism. Careers, dareness. To set down thoughts in writing means to put thoughts in writing. Faint recollection means remembering something with difficulty. Paid a social call means to visit people in parties, social gatherings, parties, etc. When not, which is used in the lesson, is a place or a town in England. The Ethics of Diet, which is referred in the essay, is a book on diet or food habits. Ascertain means to verify the facts. Coherently means logically. To speak extempore means to speak without any preparation. Vision means ear, eyesight. Blur, not able to see. Tremble means to shiver or to shake. I was ashamed of myself means Gandhiji is saying that he felt ashamed of his own weakness. Incapacity means inability. On the eve of departure means at the time of leaving England. Making myself ridiculous means to prove oneself silly or a fool. Holborn restaurant, it is a restaurant in England. Eclate means wonderful performance. Addison refers to an English writer. Conceive means the first meaning is to understand something. Second meaning is to get pregnancy. The means if you uh, use it in a wrong context or if you don't understand it properly, it creates a joke. Humorous means comic that brings laughter. Anecdote means a story or a tale or an instant. Stuck to stop without any movement. Abruptly, suddenly, unexpectedly. Got over or get over means to lose the habit. Impromptu means unprepared, unrehearsed. Constitutional shyness means natural shyness, that is, shyness which has become a part of one's life. Constitutional means to become a part of one's own body or one's own nature. Disadvantage, useless. Contrary means opposite. Hesitancy means to hesitate, whether to do or not to do, to be in a dilemma. Annoyance means irritation. Economy of words means to use less number of words. Restraining means controlling. Regret means to feel sorry. Mishap means accident or a danger. Watery of truth means a person who supports truth or a person who propagates, who spreads truth. Proneness to exaggerate means a chance to make something more exaggerated. Wittingly means uh, jokingly, humorously again. To surmount means to overcome. To pester means to trouble to bring pressure. My shyness has been in reality my shield and buckler means Gandhiji is saying that his shyness actually controlled him and it helped him to speak only truth. So that became his control, his protector. So discernment means to judge up to assess. Thank you very much for watching this video.